going to do one thing, and I am going to read the scripture that my sister read so faithfully, very well, but I want to reread it for the sake of emphasis, because I am not going to read another passage of scripture after this. We will only refer to it. And we are not going to open another Bible verse. We will only refer. But uh, when I read this, that's all that we are going to do. And we will just discuss and talk. Our subject this morning is survivors. Survivors, how to succeed on the eve of reconstruction. Survivors. I am going to read what I selected as passage of scripture here from the New King James Version. I begin with the first, the New Testament verse in Hebrews 11, the first chapter, verse 7. By faith, Noah. being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. That's a New Testament reading, New Testament testimony about Noah. Now I turn to Genesis, the eighth chapter, and I am going to read those verses, 8, 13 through to the 22nd, just to put emphasis where emphasis needs to be placed for today. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons, and your son's wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Verse 18. So Noah went out, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Then, verse 20, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, 
although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Then that concluding verse 22. While the earth exists, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. God bless the reading of his word. Survivors, how to succeed on the eve of reconstruction. The question is, why survivors? Oh, back up, back up a little. Why survivors? Because, number one, our world is changing every day. It is changing socially, economically, and otherwise, technologically. The world is changing. But more also, your world, your personal world, is changing. Whether you realize it or not, your personal world is what? Changing. It's changing. Ah, thank you. Helping these people. Your personal world is changing. When you have a birthday, you know that your world is changing. When you become a senior in high school, your world is changing. And because our world is changing, we need to adapt to thrive in a changing world. All right? That's very, very important. We need to adapt to thrive in a changing world. We got a new president for this United States of America. The world, America, has changed. Amen. Come January, when a new president takes office, America changes. Now, the question is, why are we studying Noah? Why Noah as our theme for survivors? Because, one, he lived through change. Noah lived through what? Change. He lived through change. He navigated change by faith. The verse I read here, by faith. By what? By faith. by faith. When he was warned that God was going to destroy the earth, he prepared an ark. That's what we read here. By what? By faith. By faith. And in Hebrews 11, verse 7, the verse I read here, for the first time I saw it, he prepared the ark for the salvation of his family. For the salvation of who? His family. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, good news. When Noah was warned that he should begin preparing the ark, it was just Noah and his wife. He didn't have any children yet. That's why he says, by faith. Oh. His experience, his experience, this man, Noah, his experience is repeated in our lives every day in our experiences. But much more, Jesus said, it will be repeated at the end of time. So this morning, because I prepared that I would be teaching, not just preaching, but teaching also, I have some things for you to think about. We'll go to the next slide. I need to, to give you some, some things to think about. Yeah. I want to put into context this story of Noah. This man Noah lived at a time. Now, I have put here a chart that is very, very significant. I hope you can read through here. Aha, it's clear. Lana. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Man, these guys, that's why you were born in our time. <laughs> I want you to see the names and then the age at time of birth, the, the time that the first child was born, and then the number of years after that event, and then the total years that this person lived, and the year of birth from the time of creation, 
and then the year of death from the time of creation. So I want you to go through that with me, will you? That is Genesis chapter 5. It's all drawn from Genesis what? Yes. Chapter 5. Adam, when he, he did not have a child until he was 130 years, that's when he got the firstborn. But how long did Adam live? 930 years, it says there. And when Adam was created, that was the first year of creation. So the earth was just one year old. Today is, what's the day today? December 3, 2016. 2016 years. That means it is 2000. And 16 years since Jesus was born. Mm. That's what that means. Mm. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Don't get lost in math, please. But are you listening? Yeah. 2016 means we have lived 2016 years from the day when Jesus Christ was born here on earth. So let's do some more math. How old is this earth then? We're going, we're dealing here in the history that you, I'm showing you on the chart here. We're dealing with the first 2,000 years of this earth's age, history. This earth as of, as of now is close to 6,000 years. 6,000 plus years. So we are talking about the first 2,000 years. Adam was created year one, that's that uh, one year. He lived 930 years in total. At the time he died, 930, the earth was how old? Yeah. Then Adam had a son, Seth. Seth, by the time he got his firstborn, he was 105. He lived. 912 years. By the time Seth died, the earth, that was the year, a thousand years and 42. And then you move down, Enos, then Canaan, then Mahalaleh, then Jared, then Enoch. You know Enoch was 65 years old. Eh? And then he had a child. Then he lived only 300 more years. And then what? He died? No. Eh? No. He did not die. In fact, this is an error here. There should be no, no numbers here. Please, no numbers. He did not die. He walked on, 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 and God took him to heaven. Amen. But I want you to see something here. At the time Enoch here was alive, Probably the only person who had died was Adam. All these others were still alive. Even Methuselah, when Enoch went to heaven, Methuselah was already there. Lamech, the father of Noah, was still alive when Enoch was taken to heaven. Mind you, Adam had lived 930 years. If you move down to 930 years, it takes you to somewhere around here. These people lived this long, they were able to tell story after story. These guys got first-hand stories from Adam himself, how God created this earth. How God walked here and talked to man face to face. They got that information. By the time Noah was born, his father had lived to see Enoch. He knew that somebody had disappeared here on earth, gone on to heaven. Those stories were fresh stories. Yes. Are you following so far? Yes. So we are here, Noah, at age 500, that's when he had the firstborn son, 
a little later than that, 20 years after that, after he had started building the ark, 20 years later, that's when Noah had his first son, and then followed the second son, and then the third son, three sons of Noah. I want to leave you there. God spoke to Noah. After the earth had become so corrupt, God said, I regret, he, Genesis 6, I regret that the earth has become so corrupt. Man has be, become corrupted. I am going to destroy man. Noah, prepare an ark. And Noah built this big ark, this big boat here. They say it was three stories high. Put in modern day navigation uh, measurements, it was probably an apartment complex of 200 apartments of three stories high. Huge and massive structure. He spent 120 years building this structure. Preparing for a flood when the earth had never seen a rainfall before. So, those of scientific mind were questioning Noah. Noah, from all our studies, we do not see how possible it is that water could come from heaven and drop down here. You're wasting time, Noah. But Noah says, God told me, by faith, Noah obeyed and he built that structure. And in the 601 year, the flood came. It surely came. It rained on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every human being that lived at that time, except Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, who were hidden in that ark. Every other human being, animal and human being, were destroyed. In that, sorry, back up. The only survivors <laughs> were Noah and his family coming out of the ark after the water had dried. You remember the story? The story we have told it over and over again. Let me not waste time going over it because I have more tougher stuff to share with you. But those are the survivors coming out of the ark. Noah, his wife, his son, his sons, three sons and his three wives, and the rest were the animals. Those were the survivors. Noah survived a great catastrophe. In the passages, in the passage of scripture that I have just read, Genesis 8, 13 to 22, God is speaking to Noah and God says, Noah, come out. Come out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons and their wives, and all the animals. Come out and begin again. God is giving his purpose. He says, I want you to recreate. I am not going to make another human being, but I want you to recreate. Fill the earth. And the, the verse I, have, I read to you, God promises to back his purpose by establishing Seasons and systems. I wish I could emphasize that part. My, 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 my. God help me. God promises. I read that. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to go home today without him taking this point. Verse 22, God promises that he will reestablish seasons and systems because for one year that Noah and his family and all those animals were in the ark, the seasons had become disturbed completely. So God says, I read that verse, as long as the earth remains, 
Are you following me? Yes. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest. There will be winter and summer. There will be heat and cold. There will be day and night. As long as. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, 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 that's the verse that God is, is giving you to back you up. Amen. As long as the earth remains. You have my backing. The sun will rise and set. Winter will come and summer will come. You can plant and you will harvest. There will be day and there will be night. It will get cold but it will become hot again. The seasons will be in place. I back you up with that. That's what God is saying, man. Never worry. You will have a winter coat. When summer comes, I have a t-shirt for you. Oh, no, no, no. You, you're not following this. This is tough stuff, probably. God is backing you up. As long as the earth lives, as long as the earth exists, he remains faithful. Mm -mm. Whew, man. So, what are the lessons for us? Ah, you know what? To recreate your own future, <laughs> you got to look at your seed. Uh -huh. To recreate your future, you need to look at your own what? Seed. Your own seed. You're not going to make the future out of nothing. You've got to look at what you have. Amen. Are you following me? God is going to take what you have to create a future for you. Look at your own seed. <laughs> and then, here's a question. Here's the second point here. You have to do more than, than worship. <laughs> do more than what? Worship. worship. You need to sacrifice. Are you following so far? Ah, no, no, no. Do more than worship. Yes. Ah, God is okay that you came to church today. He's okay with that. He's okay with that. But to move him to do something more for you, you go to sacrifice. Are you with me? Are you with me so far? For God to do something more, you go to sacrifice. Offer a burnt offering. A what? A burnt offering. And you go to seize the seasons and system for growth and increase. What God put in that in that verse, chapter eight, verse twenty-two. In that verse, underline that verse wherever you have your Bible. Underline it. Those are the systems God has put in place there for, for us. Ah. What did Noah do when he got out of the ark? He worshipped. He did what? Worship. He worshipped. But he did a little more than worship. He took the choicest of the animals. Mind you, those animals were the seed for the reproduction. Oh, no, 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 no. 
those animals were the animals God was counting on that if you are going to fill the earth, these are the animals. And Noah is taking the same seed of animals and he kills the clean ones. All those that were for fit for sacrifices. And he slaughters and offers them as what? A burnt offering. A what? Burnt offering. Please, ladies and gentlemen, remember that word. Burnt offering. A burnt offering was different from any other sacrifice. Any other sacrifice, the person offering the lamb was to eat part of the lamb. The priest was to eat part of the lamb. But in a burnt offering, the whole animal was put on the altar. It had to be consumed by fire completely. That's what is a burnt offering. Complete sacrifice. You do not take part in the meat of that, of that sacrifice. It is a burnt sacrifice. You are completely burnt. You have completely given. That's why I said you have to do more than just worship, ladies and gentlemen. You got to do more here. You got to do more here. You got to do more than just church. Are you listening? No more business as usual here, like the worship down the street or across the corner there. You got to do more if you're going to move God. A burnt offering. Complete sacrifice. Hey, listen. The, the verse I read said, and God smelt. God smelt the aroma of the sacrifice. Are you with me? God smelt the aroma of the sacrifice. Wherever he was in heaven, God smelt the smell from the offering and it moved it was the smell hmm. ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. what moved God was not the sacrifice <laughs> you can give your offering you can give no matter how much that's okay but it is the aroma that's what moves God and you know hey he's listen to what the Hebrew language says here the, that the word for aroma is similar to Noah to Noah rest God smelt that Noah felt the rest, the comfort after the flood. So the aroma reached to God and God smelt it. He accepted it and it moved God to say something. In his heart, God was moved in his heart and he said, never. Never again will I destroy man like this I have done. Never again will I curse the ground like I have done. Never, never. It is the spirit. It is the spirit in which you worship that moves God. It is the spirit in which you give that moves God. It's not the amount of your offering. It is the spirit in which the offering is given. Huh. And then God, when he smelt it, he was so moved. That's why he said, ha ha, never again. As long as, oh, I better stop there. Oh, oh. this thing, whoa. So, what are the lessons for us? <laughs> you need to see it into your future. Are you listening to me? 
There are some, some things that you are doing, wasting time on, because they are just for maintenance. They have nothing to do with your future or the future of your children. Oh. You put on programs, you put on programs, they have nothing to do about the future. The future of the children. Nothing. Just maintenance. God is not about maintenance. He takes care of that business himself. You need to plant seed into the future. So when you're planning, you're thinking about a church or anything like thinking about the future. Seed into your future. Then do more than the average. <laughs> do more than what? Than the average. The average cannot win in our time, ladies and gentlemen. Doing things in the average way doesn't win. You got to do more. Do more than the average. Offer a burnt offering. Whatever you do, give it your best shot. Come on. Don't do mediocre stuff. Give it your best shot. Whatever it may be, give it your best shot. That's what will move the world. Amen. That's what moves God. Be give a burnt offering, complete sacrifice. Give yourself fully. And then, hey, plug into what? God's seasons and systems for growth and increase. <laughs> oh, no. No, now I saw something here. Now you got to tune in your mind because this is, that, that part is tough. You don't get there easily. No, you got to stretch your mind. Okay? In the verse that I have re re read for you here, did you know, verse 22, there shall be planting and harvest, winter and summer, heat and cold, day and night. Those are the regulatory systems God put in place at the very creation for man's sustenance and success. Food does not just come from the soil. Uh -huh. It does not just come from good soil. Don't worship fertilizers. God was saying, he knew exactly that the man is constantly changing his wicked mind. He can worship the creation instead of the creator. They would be worshiping the moon and so forth, the, the seasons, the stars and so forth, the sun. God says, no, 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 no. Those things I put in place to regulate seasons. It is my regularity. <laughs> Passive regularity. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Now that's hard. Passive regularity is the divine plan for your sustenance, for your maintenance. What we were created to eat was to grow without you pushing the growth. Oh. Oh, oh. You can't make an apple tree to grow faster than it should grow. Because it grows. Fruit is produced by the regularity of the systems God created. Everything. Man, this is tough now. Everything that is about you 
that will sustain you can only sustain you if it goes on God's system of passive regularity. In other words, you don't need to go to, to lose sleep because you are worried that the apples or the tomatoes will not come on the tree. While you are sleeping, the fruit is growing. That's God's plan. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Now, let me translate it. Can I? Yes, yes. Man has tried to use time to regulate production. Huh? But all systems of man are active irregularity. Active irregularity. That's why you are sitting in here today, you are not at work, you are not earning any money. You will only earn money when you go back to clock in. Active irregularity. When you stop, earning money has stopped. Active irregularity. That's man's system. God's system is passive regularity. Now when it comes to there, I feel like jumping up. <laughs> Did you know because we are at the end of the world, God has done something for us. He has put technology on our fingertips. Now with the internet, we can regulate so many things. You can plug into systems of passive regularity. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You can plug into systems of passive regularity so that while you are sleeping, you could be making money. While you are sitting in here, you could be making money. Those are the systems go that God has opened to us now with the technology. He revealed that principle for us many centuries back through the tithing system. You don't understand tithing here. Come on. Amen. That principle was revealed to God's people through the tithing system. God said, all the way back, this is how you are going to fund your programs. You don't need to fund your programs by your money only. You should, you, you are going to fund God's programs, any other program, by a small percentage from this one, a small percentage from that one, a small percentage from that one. That's why God's business is still going on. Akumwenda. Yeah. Right. If it depended on active irregularity, irregularity, this would stop. The principle was put back there. Passive regularity. Man, I, let's go home. There must have been some floods in your life. Your landscape may have changed in one way or the other because there are personal floods that come that change the landscape. There may be some floods in your spiritual life so that you fall back up and down. You need to navigate that. There may be some floods in your career or professional life. Some of your dreams and ambitions may have drowned. Like the people that perished in the flood in the days of Noah. 
some of your ambitions and dreams may have what? Drowned. But you are here. You are right here. The fact that you are here means that you are a survivor. And because you are a survivor, God has promised as long as come on help me as long as the earth remains there will be planting and harvest there will be summer and winter there will be day and night there will be heat and cold I back that up I am with you Oh, come on. As long as nobody needs to worry. As long as oh, as long as the earth remains there will be planting and harvest. Um, is there anything more there? I want, you know, ask yourself. What have you survived? Huh? What do you consider to be your seed? <laughs> it may be you, or it may be your children. Seed into the future. Right. <laughs> Years are common. They throw on ether in the atmosphere, and whoever catches it and runs with it is the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, now in this technological age, my people, I'm telling you, let's change our thinking. That Facebook thing, you, you know you use it. You're misusing it. Other people are making millions while sitting in their apartments. Same Facebook. I wish my people you could tap into it. All systems God has opened now for the sustenance and success of our people. For the success of his program. Now we have opportunity to evangelize like never before. Ah, guys, yes. eh? you guys in the seminary here, man, man, you know, the church is wasting resources on 50, 90 year old methods of evangelism. They did that last year. Over 200 satellite campaigns all over Michigan spent millions of dollars didn't report a single baptism. No baptism. Wasting time. Now, all systems are in place for us to plug into. What shall we do? Hmm. Offer a burnt offering. First, come up, my dear. Offer a what? A burnt offering. Two more than the average. Do more than the average. Come on.
Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your blessing. God, thank you. We dedicate ourselves to you. Accept these lives, Father. I thank you for each one standing here this afternoon. Will you please accept us and use us anyhow you want to. Do whatever you want we give our lives back to you thank you and thank you for being very present in our midst today in Jesus name amen